This week two NFL picks edition of the sports gaming podcast is presented by mybookie.ag. Right now, to honor the return of football, my bookie is offering up to one thousand dollars in free bets using the promo code SGP. That's right, one thousand dollars in bonus bets on your first deposit when you use the promo code SGP. Play, win, and get paid at mybookie.ag. We're also brought to you by BetQL. The only app you'll need to make smart bets this season. Track line movement history, score sharp data, and use a powerful algorithm that gives out their best plays. If you're betting serious cash, you need a serious app. Head to the App Store or Google Play Store to download BetQL and make sure to follow them on Twitter at BetQL app. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gaming Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Money, 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 money! Feeling good. Wayne Gallman wished me happy <laughs> birthday today. Yes, there was a uh, there was <laughs> took a little bit uh, to get the Wayne Gallman cameo through, Ryan. But maybe I hope the you, funniest thing you've ever done. <laughs> I hope you enjoy that um, that uh, birthday shout out. Do you have the audio, Ryan? Please tell me. No, I didn't pull the audio. It's not worth playing on the show. Why? Well, Come on, really? What do you mean? It's awesome. Right. Wayne Gallman wishing you a happy birthday. The energy and enthusiasm that Wayne Gallman throws out there for his cameo. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, give, give me a second. I'll hey, Ryan, real money, Kramer. Happy birthday to the number one Giants fan. Go Giants. And uh, man, coming back from Vegas, kind of got her ass kicked. Picks were not great. I apologize. Kinda. Kind of. I think oh, possibly one of my worst all time weeks in the National Football League. It's going to be a bounce back situation. We brought on the uh, Bucks radio announcer. We'll be playing that interview uh, as we go down the line, hopefully, to get an explanation of what went wrong with our lock or my lock and the Bucks, if there's any life left in the Bucks. What else is going on, Kramer? Antonio Bryant. I'm sorry, Antonio Brown accused of uh, some serious crimes there that that's going wild Freudian slip to a former cowboy Sean <laughs> you want to explain that one my brain just knows hey if you mention uh you know if you mention horrible things it's probably a member of the Dallas Cowboys can I just ask you though sure was Wayne Gallman the first choice uh geez was he Wayne Gallman the first choice well I think so yeah yeah actually he was because he was the he was the most uh, most realistic of the uh, of, was the, of the available thing. New York Giants. You were just doing value because, of course, you're not going to pay a lot for a running back. Sean. <laughs> well, I, no I think, way you were paying the Saquon rate. Is Saquon on there? I have no idea. No, I, I, I Jeremy Shockey was possibly in oh. the mix, but I think he needed like five hundred dollars. Oh no, good choice, good choice. <laughs> Wayne Gallman was a very reasonable $35. Oh, although you will see me this year now that we're on YouTube and you can check us out youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. But Sean, I own four, four or five Jeremy Shockey jerseys. Mm. Like after LT, it's hard for me to not but think about did, was Jeremy he ever Shockey. Was he ever on the field during a giant Super Bowl? No. <laughs> no, and he was a part of that hilarious uh, Niners come from behind uh, letdown yeah. in the playoffs many moons ago. Still Crazy. have visuals of that. Watching that in my, my freaking basement. I think it was in high school. Horrible. Free roll football contest brought to you by Betsverts. Trying to give away up to $5,000 right now. Ooh. Currently in the lead Ooh. and the week one winners. 12 and 4 ATS. Buck stops here and send it BK. Congratulations, guys. He also won some free SGP merch. Drop us a line podcast at sportsgamblingpodcast.com to claim your merch. And still time to enter. You you got a little catching up to do, but hey, there's still you're still in the mix for the weekly prizes. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash contest. Sign up today. Well, and you can help us juice that pot. So please do that. I, Sean, how'd you do? We... Oh man. Just keep the prices, right? Losing horn going all fucking day. It, it was, it was a tough, it was a tough week of picks. Not only did the Eagles, they got backdoored, 
my dog, the Houston Texans, which looked amazing. And then Jesus Christ, Will Lutz hits a 58 yard field goal. Wow. As time expires, you talked me into the giants. That was, a disaster. I-, I talked you into the giants. All right, let's just rapid fire yeah, let's, recap. Let's do the recap. Let's do you remember do how to do the recap? Yes, I do. Okay. You how seem to forget season to season how we do things. I was just checking. I'm going to do the recap. Yeah, you, you, you're you driving. Okay. I'm riding shotgun. Packers, Bears. Packers, 10. Bears, 3. Both had that right. You know, <laughs> Sean. Packers, money line. It was a great start to the Vegas trip. There is nothing Right like, after the pregame periscope in Legacy Stadium. That was pretty fun. Although, uh, I mean. The game look, was horribly ugly. I hung out with some listeners. Some guys from West Virginia uh, bought me some shots of Amaretto. Yeah, acted as an audio engineer <laughs> for about 30 minutes there. It, it was a good time. I, I enjoyed the uh, fishbowl atmosphere atmosphere of recording in there. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, and, you know, it was pretty dope to hang out with some people. Cut, a, a lot of a lot of uh, Pina was there. Billy. Yeah. All the way from Got to hang out with Billy in person, live. Quick aside, because it is his Packers who won this. Uh, I, I, I hope Billy doesn't take this the wrong way. But he was exceptionally normal. <laughs> I, I was not expecting so normal. Billy uh, Bahate is just a regular dude, which you don't get that a lot from uh, former, I mean, former reality TV stars turned EPL handicappers. Yeah, and a lot of other things in between. So, yeah, I, I mean, anyway. <laughs> Jack of many Long trades. story short, felt really good. After this game happened, Sean, I, I, I was even... <laughs> And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sprinkle in stories from Vegas, but I was I was having a conversation uh, at, at some point, maybe a day or two later with site editor Ryan McKee about how, you know, it's really it's really great when the for the podcast when when uh, Sean and I start off pretty warm. <laughs> I think this was before, like the afternoon of college football happened. And it was just like this comical. Yeah, it started. It was a classic Vegas trip. I crushed the tables early. I yep. hit this green bay bet. I was living large at this. Like I I had had. Every table I sat at or threw craps at, I won money and all the best. It was just, it was a great trip to this point. So I love Thursday night football. Things took a turn. Atlanta Falcons, 12, Minnesota Vikings, 28. You had the Vikes, Ryan. I had the Falcons. Ugly game. And I didn't think Minnesota would be smart enough to <laughs> handy. They, 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 the Minnesota Vikings and myself have uh, the same opinion of Kirk Cousins because I picked the Falcons thinking, oh, Kirk Cousins can't win the game. He, he sucks at throwing the football. The Minnesota Vikings smart enough to have that same opinion and say, Kirk Cousins, we're only going to allow you to throw the ball 10 times, ten times. in a NFL game ten and you times. win by 16 points. I, I did like the Vikings. The, that was like. Tebow, they let throw the ball 15 yeah. times. Didn't see this coming. In fact, weird, I, weird layout of the game. I, I'm not Benny being saying I was on the right side of it, but no, definitely no, didn't weren't. see this game coming at all. Uh, Dalvin Cook looked amazing. Uh, Kirk Cousins. Uh, yeah, you nailed it. Love the game plan. Ten times. That's the way to do it. That's defense, what you do with Kirk. defense looked legit. And I would say I, I so much didn't see this lopsided a, a game coming that I had started Matt Bryant kicker for the Atlanta Falcons oh, yeah. in a number of leagues like straight zero how does a dome kicker get zero points uh, it like I honestly six to six or seven teams I started a kicker that got zero points which is why in the SGP listener league where we just acquired Carson Wentz in a trade Sean but Sean obviously not very excited about this he's not even out yet there we go Oh, we don't start a kicker. So long story short, I was right. Minnesota. And we forgot to mention Mitchell Trubisky looks like dog shit. So come, at, look come at us. Those, those truth fucking Bisky. myth. Mitchell it was, Trubisky. it was pretty funny. The sports book erupted with sarcastic bears fans oh. applauding a 38 yard field goal. And that was, that was their only applause of the evening. Yeah. Oh. Philadelphia Eagles, 32 skins, 27 Eagles did not cover the nine and a half. Got backdoored by the skins late started out rough. 17, zero Washington Eagles kind of came in asleep, and then Carson Wentz <laughs> unleashed the deep ball and tough day for people who said, uh, Foles was the guy you should have gone with. And I, I mentioned it a who, million who was saying that. Were people uh, really saying my that? mom, uh, <laughs> my friend, Brandon, uh, he seems so number, nice. number of callers into Philadelphia sports talk radio there. It, <laughs> it wasn't the majority, but there was a strong Foles contingent. The guy balled out in the super bowl. And like you just repeat the same nonsense talking points of Wentz can't stay healthy. 
And okay, you can criticize Carson Wentz for getting injured, but how can you use that in the discussion for choosing Nick Foles, a guy who's never finished, played 16 games, and won't again this season? I love Nick Foles, but his injury history is just as crazy, if not way crazier, than Carson Wentz. Sean, you need to save your energy for when Carson Wentz gets hurt. So just calm down. All right. It was a great start. Congratulations. I will say. Should have been four touchdowns. Should have taken some pictures. Uh, because the the back booth that we had very generous Jay Cornegy over there at this the Westgate in the at the football. Westgate oh. football central, um, Sean's so excited he's just saying words out of order and you guys the the the, the scene at the Eagles booth was very very somber early very. in the game because all all I could th- hear in my head is Sean Sean's inner thoughts of we're not gonna fucking lose to Case Keenum. We can't fucking lose the case. Keenum. And my brother and I who was out there for his bachelor party. We, I looked at him. I said, move over. We got to switch seats. <laughs> and that's when the comeback began, Ryan. So what he has to be on your left or right. He has to be on my right. Okay. New York jets 16 Buffalo Bills 17 Kramer. You talked me into the jets. We were both on the jets. I was going back and forth. I love the Buffalo defense, but I kind of thought Sam Darnold would take a step up the second year going back and forth. Uh, Josh Allen, just uh, no one circles the wagons like Josh Allen. Yeah. I think I saw some stat that out of like 490 games, only 25 times had a team won when they were losing the turnover battle by four at any point in the game. <laughs> um, uh, takeaways both teams have pretty good defenses both teams don't have good offenses jets is yeah Super pretty trash. Ugly. but i would the, the bills defense i think we were kind of on them uh early or in the preseason you especially a lot to ex- to to be excited about with that front seven they looked really good now we got to see them do it against a better team they probably won't won't be doing that this week either i'll, but I'll say this i don't know if i learned much from this game horrible back door though horrible back door i mean here's what i learned the jets i mean e- the jets with a defensive touchdown the, the offense just either the offense <laughs> is bad or this is this buffalo team per, perhaps a top defense in the league maybe that's they just the, could they scenario. just could win they could be nine and seven again with just some ugly wins speaking of ugly baltimore ravens 59 miami dolphins seven the home dog <laughs> not barking for the dolphins no Lamar Jackson just big dicking it out there and and just lit up the Dolphins. You're the Ravens. I, I had the Dolphins. I I didn't see the I didn't see the this coming at all. I and maybe I just got cute, you know, trying to be uh trying to be a sharp here. Yeah. I thought I thought Miami would be competent, but the that Laramie room. Tunsil trade yeah. I think really should have been the deciding factor. I mean, immediately after the game, you're reading reports that other team other players are contacting their agents about getting traded. It's pretty clear the organization it's bad when a professional up. athlete doesn't want to play in Miami or perhaps this is the first successful tank job, right? You just fuck up so bad that you're just starting replacement level guys. Maybe we'll see. Or maybe Lamar Jackson, some of what we talked about, right? Part of the reason we like them to win the division at that plus 300 price. I think it was Lamar Jackson had an actual off season to practice as the starting quarterback. They designed an offense well, I had for the Steelers. him. But no, we we both threw out. Oh yeah, you're. We right. both liked the Steelers to win it, but we both thought but like the, the price at plus three hundred had yes. a good price because Lamar Jackson was actually getting an opportunity to run an offense for Lamar Jackson, and they and they built it around him, and he, he threw the ball and looked and very sharp. I love that I drafted so much Mark Ingram. He looks so good. I I yes, they played a really bad team, but I I think this Ravens team might just be good. Jacksonville Jaguars twenty six, Kansas City Chiefs forty. Uh, Nick Foles threw a dime for a touchdown, then went out, broken clavicle. He'll be out at least eight weeks. Tyreek Hill separated shoulder. He's going to be out four to six weeks or some sort of shoulder injury. Nothing crazy here. Again, Jags home dog. That was that was kind of the angle, uh, I think, with our pick. But I mean, Andy Reid opening day. Andy Reid in September. That was clearly the stronger trend here. Uh, this was my underdog, which. You know, I, I, I would like to put an asterisk next to the record just because not saying they would have won the game, yeah. but would have liked to see how it would have gone with Nick Foles, because as we've highlighted, it's it's not about long 
Cox. This guy has about, some intangibles. Well, it's not what he brings. Exactly. It's not what he brings <laughs> on the field. It's what he brings in the locker room, and that's the respect through the What's through the that Teddy dog. Roosevelt? Like, walk quietly and carry a big stick? That's <laughs> Although, Nick Foles' motto. Gardner Minshew, that, that stash. Oh, he, we don't know what's I'm going on. I am all in on... <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, Jared Goff sucks island. I that's one real estate holding. The other one is Gardner Minshew is just going to be he's the fun guy who's good at football that everyone thought Baker Mayfield was. And we'll get to that game right now. Tennessee 43, Cleveland Browns 13. Play that this, dog. <laughs> this was a tough game for us, Ryan, because we were both anti Brown hype going into the season. Oh. Anti Brown. We you fucked went this up. saying, Hey, we'll take Super Bowl bets, we'll take action. And then we also put ourselves in another corner saying we thought the Titans are gonna be garbage. And then we look at week one and we're like, fuck, they're playing each other. We have to do something here. We took the home team. Not good. Uh Cleveland Browns, two pick sixes. The game just unraveled. What was I mean, so much to talk about in this game, but uh, who else? Uh, what's the Logan? The re- Hashtag tighten up Logan Ryan of the Titans. He, <laughs> he tweeted out on Twitter. Oh, I guess uh, people can throw a beer on you just cause you're a professional athlete. Logan Ryan, <laughs> you, ju- you, you, you guys just got another pick six. You're blowing the team out in Cleveland and you jump into the stands to antagonize the team uh, and the fan base, yeah. which again is a violation of the player rules. You're not allowed as a visiting player. You're not allowed to jump on oh, the stands. For fuck's sake. You sound like a Boston chowderhead being a, being a, a part-time lawyer here. No. What do you mean? I'm saying you're a fucking baby for complaining yeah, about yeah, having yeah. beer spilled on. No, you. I agree. You, you're not supposed to, if, if you want to jump into the <laughs> stands and, and rub it into the, uh, these Cleveland, these poor Cleveland Browns fans, <laughs> you might get a $9 beer thrown at your head or stop crying about it. You fucking uh, pussy. Yeah, I agree. He's crying. He's, uh, he's and, a baby. And speaking of babies, Odell Beckham. Uh, oh, hey, I'm going to run with a watch. Well, if you're going to do that, score more than 14 fantasy points, you fucking loser. Yeah, you can't wear a watch when you're playing, right? No, you're not. And he's going to keep wearing them, Ryan. He's going to keep paying the fines because he's a baller, man. Yeah. I do me. Ah, yeah. Do what's best for me. Who was the cornerback that snatched the chain? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so- that was a, it was a, <laughs> bro- uh, was it a keep to leave? Yeah. It was keep- Bronco. That's a fucking Michael Crabtree. <laughs> So a keep to leave also a guy who wants a shot himself <laughs> in a nightclub. And they asked him, uh, asked, this they asked good. him if he shot himself <laughs> and he said, uh, the, the matter is still under investigation. He's going to respect the process. <laughs> He's going to respect the process. He respected it. All right. Uh, but the watch thing. So does, does the cornerback thieve his watch? Oh, in a, that'll in be a, pretty in a awesome. Ta- he gets tackled. They pile on him and just gank his watch. Hopefully. And Odell Beck or uh, Sean Baker Mayfield just looked shitty. How do you think all the people out there are feeling about those Cleveland futures? Oh my God. <laughs> that was the other thing. Baker Mayfield and Carson Wentz had the same MVP odds oh, going into the go. season. Tying it back to Wentz always. Well, I, I'm the, <laughs> He had one touchdown and three interceptions like, at home. When has Carson Wentz ever done that? You're legitimately butthurt. He didn't get a fourth passing touchdown. Yeah, because a I had I had him in my <laughs> DraftKings lineup. Like, I have him in nine fucking fantasy uh, leagues. Why would I not be annoyed by that? No Andrew Luck in the league. You have all your time to focus <laughs> on Carson Wentz. Indeed, Ryan. Oh, let's. Uh, why don't we head over to mybookie.ag and check out what happened to the Cleveland Browns Super Bowl odds? Mm, what are, what are well, they? Guess at? where they're at now, Ryan. I have not looked. They were what twenty to one? No, they were like twelve to one. Twelve to one. They were right t- around there. They were 12 to 1. I'm pretty sure they were 20, 12 to 1. No. No? I'm yeah, look up look it up. When we pick the uh you know. All right. All right. I I'm going to guess I mean, you can't overreact. That's the big thing, right? If we're going to if we're going to talk lessons, big picture lessons here, yes. Sean. Uh you can't overreact to the one. The Browns week. were we picked it on our preview podcast at 1400. All right, 1400. It is right now, I'm going to say I would set the line at plus one, like plus twelve thousand, but I'm guessing it's probably like plus thirty eight hundred, plus three thousand. Okay. So it went fourteen to one to thirty to one. Wait, Sean, can, breaking news. Yes. 
Still happy to take that Browns action. <laughs> Hit me up at Kramer centric. The Rams 30 Carolina 27 uh, for us. That was a push, but really that was, that was one of my <laughs> few wins in Vegas. The yeah. Rams, we got it. I bet it at like one and a half too. It, it dropped late. Just went against Sham Newton. Yeah. It was just that easy. Rams didn't look great. And again, not a good spot for the Rams, but a great spot because you're playing the Panthers who suck and Sham Newton is a fraud. And that hat he wore <laughs> after I was thinking, what are we going to do for the uh, week two NFL picks? Oh, what do you mean? Uh, Cam Newton with his babushka and his uh, <laughs> Jesus I mean, Christ. You just put Cam Newton hat into <laughs> Google images. There's so many. There's so many. Oh. You have to actually type week one. <laughs> All right. So not much. What, what is he wearing? I promise you this is the first time I've seen this. What is he doing? It's insane. What is he doing? Not winning football games because uh, he doesn't have a shoulder. Cincinnati 20 Seahawks 21. I like the Bengals Kramer. You're Seahawks. Uh, I, I think the Bengals are quietly going to be a little scrappy. Wasn't as down on them as most people. Zach Taylor, uh, decent offense for him. Andy decent? Dalton, Andy Dalton, 418 Gosh, passing yards on the road. And those weren't like garbage yards. They, I mean, they were in this game and had a decent chance to win. Uh, they should, the, the turnovers, they lost turnover battle two to nothing, yeah. I believe. And that, that, that ended up being the difference. And I believe, I don't have the exact number. I was trying to pull it up here, but I believe they outgained the Seahawks by like 180 yards. And good, yeah, good look for the Bengals. So definitely the Bengals are the right side here by a mile. San Diego, Super Chargers, charge. 30 for the Chargers, 24 for the Colts. One of the better games, uh, especially late. And, uh, yeah, nice back and forth affair. The Colts look scrappy. Chargers won in OT. Uh, fun game. Eckler, really good fantasy option. Yeah. Of course, breaking news, Hunter Henry uh, fucked up his knee somehow. So Fuck even more, sake. and we didn't, uh, Tyler Lentz, one of our uh, contributors uh, mm. to the show, we've been talking about the Chargers week two, even talked a little bit about week one. He uh, he was the guy who put out the uh, parlay calculator that we're working on, the, the NFL pick thing, some of our SGP tools. I this game was uh it's really leading up this Detroit game to Austin Eckler fantasy heaven yeah. and I didn't think about it enough when we did the DFS podcast but he, I'm definitely going to find a way to get that guy in some lineups yeah real quick uh Bengals outgained the Seahawks 429 to 232 6.1 yards per play to 4.7 so uh but yeah I I mean Eckler looked good not great if you're Melvin Gordon no, I guess you got to hope to be traded. I don't know, but but Eckler's a smaller guy, so let's see if he can do it week in week out. I don't know if they're going to lean on him so much. He did score a bunch of touchdowns, and uh, I don't know. I, I think the Colts are not bad. Yeah, uh, my takeaway from the Colt from this game is that you know I think the Chargers are going to have problems keeping Philip Rivers upright, and that yeah. scares me. But. It's fucking Philip Rivers. Well, and, and what does he do? He gets it done. How is Keenan Allen open so much? It's just unbelievable. Like it's I, I thought the dog the, shit floater that he throws, but the, he throws it to a wide open guy. It's amazing. Very interesting release point. Detroit Lions. We were both on the Lions, and oh man, what Second a what a beat. collapse here by the Lions. Uh, twenty seven to twenty seven. A delicious tie. Arizona, I mean, Kyler Murray looked like hot dog shit for until most the, of three quarters. The and fourth. then Detroit sat in a prevent, prevent defense, and Kyler did Kyler-like things. So dumb. My boy TJ Hawkinson, a.k.a. Hawk, big Hawk, big game for the rookie tight end. We just traded him, Sean. We did. We did trade him in our league, but for Carson Wentz. I, I, I'm i going to be getting – if you didn't listen to the fantasy pod, I, I would definitely get you some Hawk. Cardinals, uh, I, I don't know. Do you have a big takeaway on the cards? I guess nice tie. Nice the stadium, tie. The stadium's a good hang. Remember, we got to line <laughs> up and shake hands. Two, four, six. Yeah, cool. Detroit blew this game. Yes. I think. I think we need to put. I think we need a new a new locker type space for for just coaches. We got to put put in the timeout section. Yeah. 
I, I don't think we can bet on a Matt Patricia team for a little bit. Nope. That, this He's was in time out. Atrocious, atrocious coach. And for as bad as Arizona looked for a lot of this game, they do have a guy that can go like ball out when he needs to. I, I, I got to imagine you're right. That prevent was the key, but uh, neither, neither team I'm stoked to bet on here. No. 49ers 31 bucks 17. I was just, uh, we got, we got hose there. Jameis Winston. You can't throw two pick sixes. <laughs> There's a combined three picks, pick sixes in this game. Insane yeah. amount of penalty penalties. I mean, Jameis, he had one great throw, got called back. We'll uh, talk more with our boy, uh, TJ coming up there about this game and, and break it all down. Kramer Dallas 35, the New York giants 17. <laughs> Eli Manning in Dallas. He normally shows up. He put up great numbers. I was reading a, a New York Post column saying they should not bench Eli Manning because he's not the problem. He's not the reason they let up 35 points. And, That's uh, true. I, I hope I hope they just keep playing Eli and uh, keep this long, long, this three and a half year farewell going. The longest farewell tour in New York media history, sports media history, the Eli Manning tour. And uh, you keep trying to say goodbye to Eli Manning, but the management, they just don't know how to quit you, Eli. Ryan, I believe you announced on Twitter you had a statement regarding your New York Giants. You have the floor. I mean, I, it's more of a, a hope. Okay. I hope that the Maras and the Tishes have a nice dinner together. They invite Eli. And just like the scene in Goodfellas, they walk in the door. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. And it's just John Mara and Steve Tish. There's no one else there. <laughs> the room's dark. What and else who, do you need? And who comes up from behind? Jared Lorenzen, former quarterback, big fat guy. Thought he would be good as the hitman. <laughs> Wait, he's passed away. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is a story. Oh, it's a fantasy. Yeah. Home. And he hits him in the back of the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> he didn't throw one ball down the field, Sean. But he threw for 300 you, you yards, know what? Right? You know what I love? I, I love me some Evan Ingram in fantasy because check, 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 check. Listen, it's got it's the end. I was watching that game. And the 35-17, the score was <laughs> does not even – it, it, and here's it the problem. They're in a great true. spot. This they, they might even like show up and look good. God – Pat Shermer's head has to be exploding. There's no way Pat Shermer wants to be starting Eli Manning. Zero percent chance at this point. I want Daniel Jones. I, I don't. I don't think he'd look good if you if he comes in early. But I want to see someone throw the ball down the field. Did you watch the game with yes. me? To my recollection, and I you know I was enjoying some uh, a couple MGs at that point. <laughs> That's milligrams, of course. Did he throw the ball down the field 20 yards at all? <laughs> Were there any? Eli Manning? No, I remember that's one, to La one to Cody Latimer. I remember one throw down the field. No, he just – but you see what happens. They ju You just squat. It, it, uh, anyway, we're done with this. I'm, uh, uh, the, the Giants um, – ownership needs to go in that same fucking timeout. So wow. Throw them all into the shine box. Pats 33, uh, Steelers 3. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. Wales were out. We 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 got cute here with the Steelers. They, yeah, they we just did. own the Steelers. <laughs> Nothing to stay here. Houston Texans twenty eight. New Orleans Saints thirty. We both had the Texans. That line, all those week one lines. That one jumped out of me. I yep. I should have made that the lock, but I liked it as a dog because I I thought they had a legit chance to win they outright, won. and they did. Uh, the <laughs> that was did tough. you see this? That um. That was tough. The Texans cut their cornerback Aaron uh, Colvin because, you know, they for some reason the Texans on the last play before the field goal they lined up in prevent defense. So Drew Brees just checked it down to set up the 58 yard field goal. I don't know if he did the wrong thing or whatever, but uh, he didn't have a good game. But last year he signed a 34 million dollar deal with the Texans, and Bill O'Brien just cut him. And <laughs> they should he hire just doesn't a GM. Give a fuck. Why it's don't great. they? Why do they still not have a GM? Because Bill O'Brien, he has zero fucks to give, Ryan. If you're if you're a Texans fan, you got to be worried. Deshaun Watson took a ton of shots. He looked banged up. J.J. Watt. For He's the, already banged up. Watson. J.J. Watt, for the first time in his career, 
105 games. Didn't record a tackle or a QB hit. Wow. That's an insane stat. I mean, it probably more of a reflection of how good he is than anything else. True. It's hard to hit Drew Brees. That it is. All right. Final game. Broncos. Another team I like. Disappointed me horribly. Joe Flacco on the road. Should have outweighed all the other things. Uh, Raiders 24, Denver 16. What I really thought the matchup I liked was the Denver defensive line against the Oakland offensive line. And with this Vic Fangio defense, I knew Flacco wouldn't be great, but I was relying on the Broncos defense. It just didn't show up. I was shocked. Raiders. Oh man. How obnoxious. How obnoxious are they going to be? Broncos had zero sacks and zero QB hits against Oakland. Zero. How does that happen? Uh, the, the old ball coach. Gruden, Gruden's coaching him up. Well, and I, I, this is the biggest thing out of the, this is the untold Antonio Brown story is all the people he screwed oh. out of these week one bets. If Antonio Brown, if that cancer is infecting that locker room week one, there's no way they're winning that game. How, what happens? I don't know. I just know the fact that, I mean, the, the fans were chanting fuck a B, which uh, shout out to Raiders fans. That yeah, was great. But- class act, classy organization. You guys went to Michael's before the game. You got all your styrofoam and painted your hair and you got your color and you got your, your gold and silver glitter or whatever. Your cool black costume, and, bro. Black and silver glitter. Got all dolled up, but uh, you stuck it to him. You stuck it to the Broncos. A uh, huge win for you guys. So congratulations. Yeah. Not much to add there. Flacco didn't look horrible. Uh, I mean, I, I, I didn't, I didn't see a ton of this game, but I would say that I think this was just a weird spot where you know, we overlook the fact that the home team just wins this game. It's and, true. And, uh, and the, the, to your point, Brown was gone. This is totally one of those, like where they, they step up big in this game, feel good. And then, and then it, it wears off. So. Right. You know, what feels good talking about our presenting sponsor, my bookie dot a G that's right. My bookie, they're back. Better than ever. Use that promo code SGP to play when and get paid. 100% deposit bonus. You can still get in their uh, super contest if you want. They got free blackjack tournaments. Unlike those cheap fucks in Las Vegas, they play. Uh, they pay out 3 to 2 on blackjack. No 6 to 5 blackjack over at mybookie.ag. Tons of reload bonuses. Up to $1,000 if you use the promo code SGP. All the lines that we will be picking coming up in the pick section after we talk to our good pal TJ Reeves, of course. All those spreads, mybookie.ig. You want some Thursday night props, Monday night props? That's not enough. You can create your own with their prop calculator, prop generator, whatever you call it. You can make up your own props. You can do it all. Deposit withdrawal with cryptocurrency. But just remember, play, win, and most importantly, get paid over at mybookie.ag promo code SGP joining us on the line. He is a Tampa Bay Buccaneers radio sideline reporter and host of three dog Thursday, the podcast TJ Reeves, TJ. Thanks for calling in. Hey, thank you guys for having me and football is back. And at the time that we're talking, I'm getting ready for some Thursday night football. My Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers in the somebody is going to get healthy Thursday night and be one and one, and somebody's going to be hating it at zero and two football game coming up. Yeah, and, and speaking of the Bucks, you say my Bucks when talking about your Bucks. They were supposed to be our Bucks because Kramer, <laughs> Ryan, and I both were. We were buying the Bruce Arians coming in. He's going to shape things. Things are going to be different. If anyone can fix Jameis Winston, it's it's our boy Bruce Arians. Sean, I said ten wins this year. <laughs> What was I, I made thinking? I made the Bucks. Now but- wait, wait, wait! You guys are already <laughs> abandoning ship after Uno Gamo one game, and you're going bye bye. I I don't get to abandon the ship, but you guys are already vacating on the good ship Buccaneers after a game. I know it was not pretty against the 49ers, but there's still some hope that this will be better, right? Full, full, um, di- full disclosure: I I will ride and die with Virginia Tech great Bruce Arians all day <laughs> long. I was just very disappointed. <laughs> Winston literally cost cost the team the game. 
What do you? Um, and, Look, you're not telling me you're not telling me anything that I don't know because I was right there on the interception to Richard Sherman, guys. I'm uh, down on the sideline on the radio broadcast. It's right in front of me, <laughs> and you can talk about Peyton Barber, the running back, not running the right route or whatever. But he threw the ball right to Richard Sherman's area, and that guy's a Pro Bowler. I know he's not what he was pre Achilles injury, Legion of Boom, but I mean that that that's recipe for disaster. So. There's one thing we fundamentally know that Jameis Winston has been prone to interceptions throughout his career, going all the way back to his final year at Florida state when they still, when they overcame him at Florida state and still made the college football playoff. So he's had a problem with that and it reared its ugly head in week one. And that has got to stop. If it doesn't stop, it's not going to be good for him. It's not going to be good for the Bucks' chances to win, guys. And what's it, as the radio reporter hanging around the team? What's what's the vibe? Are they are they? Do you think mentally they're able to shake this off? Uh, what what? Are, I what would, kind of, you know, honestly, I, I would say there's some anger. There's some of that. The offensive line is definitely pissed off because they did not play well last week. I mean, San Francisco, time and again. Uh, beating guys off the snap and in Jameis Winston's face before he even had time to set up. You can't do that, uh, especially when they're not even blitzing uh, in a lot of cases. So one thing to keep an eye on uh, at the time you're hearing the podcast, if it's prior to the Thursday night game, is the Buccaneer pass protection at least decent? Are, Are they keeping the Panthers off of Winston right away? Because that was a lot of the trouble with the San Francisco pass rush they're bringing four guys and two of them are getting home almost at the snap. Yeah. So that's got to be a lot better. Give him some time, get him more comfortable. And honestly, from, from, from my perspective, I think we were kind of bullish on this front seven for San Francisco. So maybe that's just coming to fruition, but yeah, I, I would love, I would just love to see him have some time. I'd love to see him have time to make a good decision because <laughs> I'm all in on the, I have Jameis Winston on a lot of fantasy teams. I'm high on the bucks this year. Uh, like Sean wagered some money on the bucks in week one. And it's just, ah, oh, it's disheartening, but we're, we're, we're here to rally. What do you, besides limiting the turnovers? And I'm sure Arians has been preaching ball security, Jameis Winston all week. What other adjustments are the Bucks looking to make going into this game in Carolina? Well, I think they want to feature Ronald Jones some more because we saw him as that game wore on, and he got carry after carry where he got to the second level and showed the promise that this team drafted him out of USC with. You guys are in Southern California. You know what he did at Southern Cal. And then he was in the deep freeze here a year ago under the previous yeah. coaching staff. He didn't get a chance to play very much. So now it's almost like a rookie year for him out there running around on fresh legs. He looked great. I think that's one of the adjustments. Can they establish him early in tandem with Peyton Barber uh, in the backfield? And defensively, they had a sack last week. They didn't have as much pressure as probably they would like. They want to get after Cam Newton. The last time they played the Panthers last early December, Newton's shoulder was hurting. He eventually had shoulder surgery in the offseason. But he threw four interceptions in that game, guys. So they, they knew, I know it's a previous defense, different scheme. They, they knew that day they could rattle him and get some picks off of him. They would love nothing better on Thursday night football to put some pressure on Cam Newton and have him throw it to the Buccaneers a couple of times. Yeah, and uh, does it seem like uh, he's going to be the uh, uh, Jones? Is he going to be the featured back as far as fantasy moving forward? It, they haven't really announced that he's the number one, but it does seem like that's where they're going. My perception is you're going to see the same thing early on in this game that you saw against San Francisco. That's Peyton Barber early trying to get him established because he's a guy that gets better as the game goes on. And you'll see Ronald Jones a little first quarter, some more second quarter. And Bruce Arian said uh, coming off of that game, on his Monday press conference and his Monday radio show, look, we're going to ride the hot hand. And when Ronald Jones was ripping off eight yards, 10 yards, 12 yards, very nearly got out the gate once on what would have been about a 60 yard touchdown. He said, we're going to ride the hot hand. But I think for right now, you'll see Peyton Barber at the start of games. You'll see him on the goal line for a lot of their offense, at least early on here in the season, because they trust him. And that's what he's been doing the last couple of years, carrying in short yardage and on the goal line. Now, uh, going to the other side of the ball, it seems like this Panthers offense, they just they they're just working through McCaffrey. Uh, what's kind of the Bucks uh, game plan to slow him down? Do you think they spy a guy on him? Uh, what do they do to limit the impact Christian McCaffrey can have against him? 
Much easier said than done because he had two big games in, in both games last year against the Bucks. even in the loss last year. He had over 100 yards from scrimmage, and in particular, catching the ball out of the backfield. This is where it'll be key that the Buccaneers' uh, Pro Bowl caliber linebacker Levante David and the rookie first-round pick Devin White out of LSU at linebacker have to try to shadow McCaffrey some as best you can. Be a sure tackler as well. The guy is elusive. You guys know the Pac-12 well. You know McCaffrey well from when he, when he played out at Stanford. Very talented as a pass catcher, as a runner. Can even play a little quarterback if they wanted to have him throw the ball on trick mm. plays and stuff. So he's the key. I mean, you watched that game last week with the Rams. He was the biggest key to their offense uh, with being able to get him the ball out of the backfield, especially on pass plays. So that's going to be one one thing to watch, and and the Bucks have got to be ready, whether it's David or, or Devin White shadowing him, they may be on him from the time he gets off the bus, boys. Uh, <laughs> just say, go pick Big him up shadow. now. We'll see. Now, uh, TJ, give us, maybe you don't want to throw out the score, the side total, doesn't matter, or just one sort of uh, one sort of prediction for the Thursday night game. Could be an angle on the game, could be a, a player to go off or to have a, a bad game. What's one prediction that you think uh, that you have your eye on going into this Thursday night? Well, in game? terms in terms of scoring, I see this one in the twenties, like twenty four, twenty one, twenty seven, twenty four, something like that. Bucks are not going to have trouble scoring points by and large, uh, and and I, I believe Carolina is going to get theirs too in this game tomorrow night. I'm curious if Greg Olson, the tight end, who's got an injured back, he's questionable. He tweaked the back in the game with the Rams. If he's healthy. Short week here. He always kills the Buccaneers, especially in the red zone. He's Cam's go-to guy, and the Bucks have had trouble covering him. So I don't. This is not a situation where I believe the Bucks win the game like thirteen to seven. It's going to be a fairly high-scoring game, probably in the twenties, the mid to the mid to high twenties, something like that for this game. And I, I love the name Chris Godwin. You're talking about fantasy football. Oh yeah. Uh, hopefully, almost. All of your audience and everybody understood. Go to that guy as as the second weapon behind Mike Evans in the Bucks receiving core. Love me some Chris Godwin. I have him in two different leagues. He got a touchdown <laughs> last week. I think he could get another touchdown in this game tomorrow night. They love Godwin, especially when they get like in the plus thirty, the plus twenty area around the red zone, that kind of stuff. They love going to Godwin. Jameis Winston loves going to Godwin. Let's see if that's the case for Thursday night. I mean, Sean, to the Greg Olson point, if I tweak my back, I'm not playing in a football game three <laughs> days later. So kudos to him if he can make that happen. Short turnaround. All right, TJ, uh, I know it's late on the East Coast. Appreciate you hopping on, giving us some Bucks insight. Before we go, I've been a guest uh, now twice, and people can check out the first and second appearance of Three Dog Thursday, the podcast. Why don't you explain to people the concept of Three Dog Thursday? Thank you very much for the opportunity. It's something that I have fooled around with. I've done radio locally in Florida and nationally on, on outlets like Fox Sports Radio, Sirius XM, and other places, and I've done it as a segment on my show. So about four years ago, I said, hey, let's turn it into a full-blown podcast with guests that come on and give their insight, their analysis, their picks. And, Sean, you've been good enough on behalf of Ryan to come on and represent Sports Gambling Podcast and make some picks. And, and I'll tease for the audience, Sean loves a couple of humongous dogs, like St. <laughs> Bernard Mastiff-sized dogs uh, this week. So you'll have to listen to, to hear what he likes in college and the NFL, a large one in both. Uh, I'll give you a couple of games that I'm looking at strongly, too. You'll check out the podcast. You'll hear me talking about Iowa State and Iowa for this week with Iowa State at home off the bye week. Everybody's given up on Paul Rhodes' team after they struggled in their opening game to win in triple overtime at home. They've had a bye week. Now they play the rival Iowa. I'm looking strongly at that game. I'm looking strongly, speaking of you guys being in, in California, at BYU and Southern Cal. Southern Cal on the road, U.S. USC at Provo. I'm looking at that game too. And in the NFL, a couple of intriguing games, including the Raiders. I don't know what you guys thought real quick about the Raiders and their debut uh, beating the Broncos the other night, but the Raiders have the Chiefs this week. I'm looking strongly at that game for Three Dog Thursday as well on the podcast. So uh, is Gruden back? Are the Raiders back? The Chiefs and that long standing rivalry. This is the last time they're going to play it in Oakland. Save for, okay, look, I'm not on drugs tonight. The only other way they would play in Oakland 
is if Oakland wins the division, stop laughing, Sean. <laughs> Only if Oakland wins the division and Kansas City makes the playoffs as a wild card team could they play again in Oakland AFC before it's all over and they move game? to Vegas. I think I have a better <laughs> chance of of, uh, of of landing on the moon between now and January than that than that happens. So. Well, but they they play Sunday. I'm interested in the Raiders. I like the points there. I think in that one. So we're talking about that one on the podcast as well. We have a lot of fun. You can find us at Three Dog Thursday wherever you find podcasts: iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Go to at Three Dog Thursday on Twitter for the podcast as well. We have a blast with this guys. Just picking underdogs, only underdogs. Only it's so dogs. easy to pick the favorites. <laughs> yeah, only dogs. And uh, I appreciate you calling in. TJ Reeves once again, and make sure you give him a follow on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, appreciate the time, and uh, I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. I always love getting to hop on and talk football, talk Buck football. You guys, real quick, you didn't say anything about the spread here in this <laughs> one. Are you leaning Carolina at home, or do you like my Buccaneers getting that six or six and a half, whatever it is? It's always hard to to want to get behind a road team on Thursday night. I th it's such a strong trend. It's such an advantage to not have that short week and the travel. Uh, all that being said, uh, the Bucks are my cocaine right now. And, I, <laughs> and I'm not giving up that after one week. So, yep. I, I'll, 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 hey, we got the Buck, uh, the Buck sideline guy calling in. I, <laughs> I can't give up on Jameis Winston, Bruce Arians, uh, you know, him drinking paint to rally, to rally uh, to, or to be a tough guy growing up. It is uh it's not great for road teams. I think 44, 28 and six ATS on the road, but I think this Bucks uh, team could be the exception again. I, I Cam Newton. Just... All right. You're being, you're being very charitable to me. We'll see what happens <laughs> with the Thursday night game. I mean, the audience that's obviously hearing us after Thursday night knows how smart we were or not to be talking this up. I, I look forward to a hotly contested game. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Two teams playing on the line. We'll see what happens. I love getting to talk about this stuff. I appreciate you guys coming on with me on Three Dog Thursday. Thank you for letting me pop on the Sports Gambling Podcast, boys. Awesome. Thanks again, TJ. Cheers, man. Once again, awesome time. Talking to our new pal. Check out that Three Dog Thursday podcast that uh, TJ hosts. It's a lot of fun. Just dogs. I like that gimmick, Ryan. That should have been our gimmick. Instead, TJ took it. TJ though you know betting the dogs historically it's sharp it's a sharp move if you're looking for more sharp data you know what you got to do you got to download that BetQL app that's right they already got sharp data loaded up for the week two NFL games you want to see who the pros are backing just get that BetQL app week three college football they got your sharp data line movement BetQL they're tracking it Let's say you don't know what the hell's going on with the game. You want some trends. You want some analysis. You want an algorithm on your side helping you pick games. BetQL's got you covered. If you live in Jersey or PA, you can hit up some exclusive offers using BetQL's data to make the right bets. And it's pretty easy, right? You know how to download an app. You just go to the App Store or Google Play Store to download BetQL. And make sure you follow them on Twitter at BetQL app. Good times, Kramer, with BetQL. Great times. Good times, great times. Sean, let's do it. Just so you know, it is week two. I saw you tweeted out for some questions tonight. I did. And you wrote week three. It's NFL. confusing because now uh, now I'm getting neat, knuckle deep in this college oh. football. What and are you doing? Uh, I was I, I was thrown off, right? Got to prioritize. Well, and, and week one, it's uh, you know, listen, it's it's in the past, it's in the rear view. Looking before, to move on. Before we get to the picks, we should address it because half the questions are just some sort of play on uh, coming on someone's back. Um, <laughs> Antonio Brown, I don't know if you saw this today. Bill Belichick cut his presser short. Oh yeah, because he was tired of taking the Antonio Brown questions. Ooh, this can't be good. Um, or either that or Belichick's going to be really pissed off and just start well, crushing people. Well, known Chowderhead, uh, radio broadcaster for the Patriots, known Chowderhead. Scott Zolak All right. mentioned that uh, if he practices, he plays. That's what he tweeted out. So take take that with a grain of salt. But I think that means uh, Antonio Brown's going to play. And I know people are asking about our, our two cents on it. I, I think he – I have a feeling he plays. 
but we'll see. Maybe see him a little bit in the second half when they're up by 28. Make him earn it. Make him realize he's he's new to the squad. <laughs> anyway, Thursday night football, Sean, Tampa Bay. Well, our, we, just, we just talked about it with TJ. Yeah, our Bucks. I'm going to ride the Bucks. I'm going to ride the Bucks. You want me to tell you what the spread is? Sure, but we already talked about I it. I know. Throw it out again. Our, our Bucks. they're heading to Carolina. Carolina's laying the full touchdown over at my bookie. Minus 120 on that seven. Minus 300. For the money line, Tampa plus 250. 49 is the total. Yeah, Carolina looked pretty bad, right? They did. Cam Newton still can't throw a football. This this Bucks team. I'm not jumping off the pirate ship. I'm gonna give it one more one more scallywag run here for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Are we are we just are we overthinking this? Because they, they are on it's the Thursday night road spot, right? Don't you just blindly take the home team? I will after this game. No, but <laughs> you can't do that. It, it, it's at its best early, right? No, but didn't uh no, the, the What could they correct in a couple days? The Green Bay Packers, they won on the road Thursday night, so it's already But that's not a short rest. Yeah, that's true. Okay. But did, did did the did the Bucks do anything that warranted the fact that they need rest? No. Okay. So you're saying they they don't they don't deserve rest. So they they don't, don't deserve rest. Bruce Arians is not giving them rest. God damn it. Bucks I, keep it close. I love that it's seven here. I got you can't lay seven with Newton right now. I, and it, what, what, what right now? What do you mean? <laughs> right now. All right. I'm going ab- against my better judgment. And I'm going to take the road team on Thursday night because it's too many points. Arians get its fix. They have, they, they have a paint paint chewing session. Arians gets everyone sorted. My man, Jameis, who we got on the, the board behind us, he gets that W. I, I did tweet this out, Sean, 4-12 and 12 since that incident. So I uh, hope that isn't the, the – But you always have to clarify what incident because there's been about nine. Well, when he ate career. the W, as he's doing in this picture, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, he ate the W. And uh, ever, ever since they just it's it's the Tampa boat trip, right? Because it's strip clubs down there, so there's some, there's some time. It's a permanent know. boat trip down Sunday. In the Indianapolis Colts, they head to Tennessee to, to face our, 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 our new gals. gals. Tighten, Tighten up. <laughs> Tighten up, gals. Oh, that's a set. That's a drop. Right. And <laughs> harmonize. Tennessee is minus three, minus 180 on the money line. Indy plus 155. 45 and a half is the total. The minus three is actually minus 122. So mm. it's it's looking like it might, might pop. <sighs> I mean, what do we tell our clients all the time, Sean? Don't overreact to week one. Yeah. Unless you see something that is going to be repeatable, sustainable. And yes, love the way Tennessee looked. But did Mariota really look that good? No, he didn't. He didn't throw to the wide receivers. Jacoby Brissett actually looked pretty decent. And this Colts team is still well coached. They have they have really good offensive line. And that's that's probably something we really overlooked was the Tennessee Titans being able to uh, get pressure on Baker and yeah. fluster him, especially with their defensive schemes. I think Frank Reich is going to have this Colts team prepared, and that offensive line looked legit. Like Joe Kobe Brissett had time. They moved the ball on the road, and it, it's a bunch of travel. But, but I like the Colts, and historically the Colts have hung in Tennessee. I know some of this is with Andrew Luck, but some of it's not. Tennessee one and six, uh, or no, Tennessee, yeah, Tennessee one and six straight up in their last seven games when playing at home against Indy. So for whatever reason, the Colts do have the the Titans number in Tennessee. It is a back to back road spot. You mentioned the travel. I to me, I think the public just saw Tennessee shellac a team that they thought was supposed to be good public all over these simply just going to play that early market regression where guess what Tennessee won't be as good as they looked last week and I have a feeling that even though they looked good in a road loss folks will remember the fact that they lost and lost by six so and should have won because their kicker missed what three yeah you want to talk about regression him uh, if you if you were gonna guess Colts Chargers game, who's gonna have bad kicker luck? Wouldn't be the Colts. That would not have been my guess. And I don't think he can't have a collapse like that again back to back. 
This yeah, Tennessee so, team could kind of come down to earth a little bit, and they were they were really celebrating. We talked about Logan hopping in the stands. I mean, the, the guys. You want to crown them? Crown their asses! Yeah, they were getting emotional. It's like, come on, guys, act like you've been there a little bit. Well, we love that too, right? We love when a team did it. It felt almost like they're coming off a Super Bowl win. Meanwhile, the Colts, kind of the opposite. They just played a highly competitive game yep. against possibly one of the better teams in the AFC on the road. Granted, they had some fan, a decent contingency of fans there, but uh, I like the Colts still. I'm going to keep riding them. Uh, what I wanted to point out, Mariota only had, I believe, nine targets at wide receivers for a total of four catches. It's just not sustainable. He was 14 for 24 for 248 yards, but remember, a couple long passes in there. I just and yeah sure the the game dictated where he, he didn't have to. I just I think against a a team that will be well coached, unlike Freddie Kitchen and the Cleveland Browns. I, give me the give me the points. Ten a.m. The Chargers they go on the road, Sean, which they love the road. Uh, San Diego, the world's Super their Chargers road. Chargers charge. They didn't lose a game last year. Should point out though, both outside the, of LA. Should point out both Indiana Chargers coming off an overtime game, so it th that matters. But it's it week, was a, week one. It was a short overtime game. They scored the touchdown. Uh, Chargers go to Detroit, where char the Chargers are minus three, minus one thirty on the money line. Detroit is plus one fifteen. Forty seven and a half is your total. Detroit minus one twenty on that plus three. So maybe maybe some movement towards a two and a half there. I certainly don't understand it. Matt Stafford doesn't beat good teams. I do think this is going to be a good team. Matt Patricia's in timeout. So only one option here for me. Chargers minus three. Yeah, I I can't back this Detroit Lions team against a good team. They struggled against a, a somewhat bad team against the Arizona Cardinals. This Chargers team just figures out kind of how to win games. Um, I feel like you could probably bet it somewhere at two and a half. Uh, if you wait long enough, there's there's some two and a halfs popping around. The public is on the Chargers, yep. which is kind of scary. But I, I think they're just going to be able to move the ball. And that had to have been demoralizing. Sean. That, that timeout that basically cost the Lions the game there. Yeah. Trust uh, me. You saw Matt Stafford saying it on the on, – and trust the, me. And they don't. They clearly don't yep. trust him. Uh, questionable play design. I, I do like what they're doing on offense, getting Hawk involved. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to be tough for the Chargers to cover, but – I still like the Chargers defensive line to get some pressure against Matt Stafford and Stafford just doesn't beat good teams. And in this case, both teams coming off overtime. So um, I think, again, I think I would be looking maybe towards Detroit possibly if I hadn't put Matt, Matt Patricia in timeout, but he's just off my board. That yeah. was, and, and that Chargers was one of the worst coaching. He literally, he coached his team into an, a tie against a quarterback that had no idea how to play quarterback, got sacked by his own lineman earlier in the game, and he he, he literally he coached them into that tie. That, was, that felt like a demoralizing tie from the Lions' perspective. Sometimes, like for the Browns, getting your ass kicked, that's kind of a wake-up call. For certain teams, getting your ass kicked, it could be a wake-up call. For this Lions team, that just felt demoralizing. Yeah. That's got to be disheartening. And, uh, yeah, give me the Chargers minus three. Let's do it. That feels good. Buffalo. In in rare, I don't – unclear. I couldn't find a record of this happening before. I didn't, I didn't exactly dive through the schedule for 20 years. But Buffalo on the road again in the same building to take on the New York Giants. Back to back. Where the Bills are minus one and a half, minus 125 on the money line. Giants – Plus 105, 43 and a half is the total. The look ahead for this game, I believe, was minus three for the Giants. Feels like a lot, really? of, lot of movement. Maybe it was two and a half. Ryan, I know it moved a number of points. Ryan, speaking of 105, this is an interesting set I came across. 18 of 32 NFL quarterbacks had a passer rating of over 105. The whole league, as an average, had a QB rating of 100.2. What are you going to tell me? Eli Manning, not one of those 18 to 32 quarterbacks. In fact, Eli Manning, in spite of the fact of throwing for 300 yards, a touchdown, no interception still. 95. Is he starting? Point five. Is he starting this week? This, this is a better line because we know Eli Manning is 
going to start week two. Will they need to clarify that Eli Manning is the starter between when now when we're taping this podcast and when it airs or sorry, when the game kicks off, will there be a clarifying? Hey, just so you guys know, I feel like they would have done that on Monday, but maybe there's a chance if he loses to the bills, is he starting week three? The answer? Yes. Well, I'd say this. He was benched in the game. Okay, because uh, the game was out of reach. But but it was repeatedly reported as benched. I don't know if that was said in a press conference or what. Is there a chance they're going to announce a starter this week and it's not going to be Eli Manning? No, not this week. This is they're still in playoff contention, Ryan. Come on. You can't That is what he's John, won two Super Bowls. My my buddy John said. Well, um, I think I said that the Giants were also in the penalty box. Wow, are you gonna do it, Ryan? Are you gonna take the so Buffalo Bills? Give me the Buffalo Bills. Oh no. The only the only team actually from New York. <laughs> Um, the Jersey Giants. I'm just. Uh, I'm just gonna keep fading Eli Manning. It's it's that simple. And Buffalo, I think, actually matches up with them pretty well. Nah, I'm kidding. I'm taking the Giants. Of course, they're gonna show. <laughs> they're gonna show up. LT is gonna come out. Maybe Strahan. Who else? No, they gotta roll no one's out. Showing up? Are you kidding? They're God, embarrassed. They're so bad. I don't bet this game. Do yourself a favor. Bet the Bills. No, bet, bet the, the bills. bills. But I'm going on record with the Giants. Just I advise my clients to not listen to me in this case. Josh Allen will pull some shit out of his ass. The Bills defense is just going to shut down the Giants and create some turnovers and they'll be in trouble. Yeah. But we should, you know what we should do, Sean? What's that? Well, we just talked about a team. It, it is 9-11. So yes. I guess happy 9-11 day. Is that what you said? No. No. You say, let's have a moment of silence for 9-11 day. Yeah, you're just like, hey, do you remember where you were? Is it weird that we have a picture of Jameis Winston eating a W <laughs> on 9-11 day? Hey, we need to do life as normal. Otherwise, the terrorists did, win. That's did you see I'm... what Lenny Dykstra tweeted out? Well, it's already been clarified that the, supposedly it was um, one of his college aged. Uh, co Lenny has been throwing one of his uh, Twitter interns under the bus, and uh, they've been uh, they also like Matt Patricia are in, in timeout, according to at Lenny Dykstra. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what's going on over at Lenny Dykstra social media headquarters. Certainly a questionable tweet. When a listener of ours sends us a tweet that Lenny Dykstra sends out and says gross and yes. is dead serious. When <laughs> that's pretty hilarious. When D Lenny Dykstra is offending our listeners, clearly he's crossed <laughs> the line. Arizona heads to Baltimore where Baltimore is a 13 point favorite minus 750 on the money line Arizona plus 525 this is another another number that moved a lot Jeez. from the look ahead how dumb is this but we have to take Kyler Murray to cover this right yeah I, I'm backdoor uh, you know what we Kyler might have a new name what's that backdoor Jimmy I don't know <laughs> what, what how do we got to fix something with Kyler but Kyler loves the backdoor I I mean, Ooh. Baltimore's defense, I picked them in DFS. I, I think they, I think they could score. I, I think they're going to be fierce. I think the team's going to be fired up. But when they set, when they sit back into that prevent, like they did against the dolphins, eventually Kyler's yeah. going to eat them. Kyler, up. Kyler could. So it'll be, it'll be an interesting game. Actually, probably not. I, I, I don't have an amazing handicap on this Ma game. Maybe we call him Kyler, the garbage man, Murray <laughs> time to take the trash out. Kyler. <laughs> I just can't take this Baltimore team laying 13 points against anyone yet. It feels like a colossal overreaction to week one. Maybe they'll get to that new England territory where they're laying two, three scores, but uh, you can't do that. Uh, they put up 59 points. That's not going to happen back to back weeks. If they put up 35, 35, 24 seems reasonable. Here's my concern. Yeah. The dolphins could be one of the worst football teams we've seen in 10 years. Yes. So, but it's still NFL to score that many points is still very impressive. They also hit on a bunch of D I, it was also on the road in, in the Florida heat concur. I'm looking up Baltimore minus nine and a half was the look ahead. So, yeah. so I guess we got to take all this free points, right? It's moved three points. and a half. I mean, sure. But do you adjust Baltimore more than you adjust Miami down? That's the question. So I think. I'm a little worried about Arizona versus Baltimore defense. Baltimore's really good at home. I feel like 
is Arizona the 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 square sharp? Is it the the public dog this week? You think so? I don't. I don't. I don't think. I think everyone kind of suits saw through that Cardinals team and they're they're not back. Yeah, we have to fade 59 points. Let's take Arizona. I don't I, I don't like this this play either. No. I'm staying away from both those games. No, it's actually it's actually pretty even. <laughs> give me Baltimore. The, the odds I, shark I the odds shark supercomputer has it going 35.9 for the Ravens, 0.4 for the Cardinals. That's Wait, insane. How do you, how do you score point four? I think the Explain fact that, that they, I think the fact that they tied their first game just broke the computer somehow. Arizona zero four and one straight up in their last five. Yeah, just give me Baltimore. I, Baltimore's one and six ATS in their last seven games at home. So wait, are you taking Baltimore or Arizona? I feel like we're gonna if we take Arizona, we're being cute, right? Isn't that the problem? All right. You know what? It's under two touchdowns. Let's take the I, Ravens. I, I started uh, the Ravens defense in DraftKings. Let's just go. Yeah, maybe they won't sit back. I mean, you think Kyler Murray's going to deal with Ed Reed well? Probably not. Earl Thomas. Let's be chalky for one of these. Oh, shit. We got to be chalky. Oh, fuck. Miami heads down or hosts the New England Patriots. Miami, of course, coming off. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. A shellacking. We just talked about it against the Ravens. Patriots are laying 19 points, minus 2,400 on the money line. 11 to 1, the Dolphins are for one game. <laughs> Most teams, not that much for a division. 47 and a half is the total. You got to sprinkle a little on the 11 to 1, right? Um, <coughs> Miami, of course, if you're a new listener to the Sports Gambling Podcast, this is the, the, the only thing that's as old as me and Sean on the podcast, and that's the close your eyes special. When mm. a team underperforms the spread by 21 or more points and is catching points the next week, it is a monster trend. Whale play size trend, uh, especially when they're a home dog. Perhaps Miami may be just breaking this because they're so bad, but you got to take it, right? Yeah. there's a, Do you? There, there's an interesting stat here. The Patriots, historically, as favorites of 18 points or more, 5-0 and straight up, 0-5 ATS. And they always they always struggle in Miami. Miami's 5-1 and ATS in their last six games when playing at home against New England. They always lose that random game in Miami. It's hot as shit. What week were we out there when you bet on the uh, <laughs> Dolphins with that dude who was... It was early. It was late September, early October. My, it was probably the first week again. <sighs> I, I again don't fuck with this game at all. Maybe you play Patriots first half. Who's betting this? But officially, just take Miami plus nineteen. You know how many lines have been bigger than this road favorites in the past thirty years? Two. Take, take a stab. One. One game. Yeah. Also the Patriots. You, you gotta you gotta fade historic stuff like you this, do. Right? It's historic. It's a historic event. It's a close your eyes special. We live by the close your eyes special. We're taking the Dolphins, and I'm going to be sprinkling that money line a little bit. Dallas, the Cowboys coming off that big win, head to Washington, where Washington is a five and a half home point home dog, my plus one ninety five on the money line. Dallas minus two forty forty six and a half is your total. De Rain Dakota Prescott was looking awfully good out there oh, huh, Sean? and the uh the cowboys fans were feeling themselves feeling them so super bowl the sports book super guy bowl. walking around with the flag week one that's not when you break out the flag dude fuck you week bitch. one cowboy <laughs> classic cowboys now go fan. home and get your fucking shine box redskins look scrappy huh yeah they did they're not the redskins not horrible darius guys he's Com out with a knee injury completely fell apart in the second half they did that's true they're well, very cowboy esque. I am honestly, I am kind of worried about this Cowboys offense. The Cowboys offense look good, and maybe it's I'm talking myself into the fact that the Giants are just colossal pieces of dog <laughs> shit, and that's what I'm. That's the reality I'm choosing to live in. But does does Washington get up for this game? That's a valid question. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a it's it's are I they think are, it's their biggest rivalry, right? It's their biggest rivalry. They're at home, home opener. Dallas feeling themselves. Do they make this a game? Uh, I I mean, if the offense can play the same way, I think they have a shot. I, I think 
I mean, the Giants What's completely scary is, fucked up the game plan by taking Saquon Barkley out of the game. But you also, I mean, who's going to – you probably upgrade at running back. You bring AP out there. You get Chris Thompson involved. This rookie, McLaren, McLaurin, whatever his name is, he looks like he can ball. I mean, he, he made the Eagles look silly a couple times. So I, I think there's opportunity for there to be points in this game. I just don't know if I want to be catching five and a half. I, I was cool catching nine and a half, ten with yeah. Case Keenum uh, in a divisional game like that. I just, this Dallas team is good. And, and the one, the, my big one, my one big takeaway is that the, the offensive line is back to being really good. And Zeke wasn't even full speed. And they just, the Giants didn't sniff. They didn't sniff. And now granted the skins probably have a better pass rush, but the Giants didn't sniff Dak Prescott. And I'm going to give him some respect this week, Sean. I'm going to call him Dak Prescott. Wow. He, Ryan. God, you just- that is a disgusting act. Now, I'm going to take Carson Wentz off the table, but name me a quarterback that had a better game in the NFL. It's uh, He looked great. Andy Dalton. He looked great. I think uh, and Dalton's... Patrick no, Mahomes. No, no. Patrick Mahomes was showboating with that no-look pass. It was disgusting. <laughs> There's no place for that in the sport. He, he looked like a real asshole. Give me Dallas laying the points. Oh, wow. All right. Do I ride with Ryan or do I fade Dude, Ryan? I'm telling you, this offensive line is is going to be a problem. So wait, real quick, did you take Carolina minus seven? No. Okay. I don't know why I wrote it down like that. I. It all makes sense. I think Dallas's speed could beat the Washington secondary as as Deshaun Jackson kind of exposed them. But I'm gonna I'm gonna believe in my skins, the four skins as my dad calls them. Did, get, this is the game they get up for. Can I help you? Sure. Can I help you? One one point. Did you see the way that team just completely like they they weren't playing? It wasn't the same team in the second half. Yes, but they're at home. They're at home. They'll rally. They'll rally. Their war cry. Yeah. Okay. It's very offensive, Sean. Another game I'm not touching. Another ten. Lots of ten a.m. kicks. I love when they do this and they just leave three games for later. It's so dumb. Jacksonville heads to Houston, where Houston is coming off Monday Night Football. They're laying nine, Sean. Jacksonville plus three sixty on the money line. Houston minus four fifty. Forty three and a half is this total. I have no idea what's going on with this number. No Why idea. Why is it so high? I, I didn't see a Houston team that's capable of covering a big number. I I see a Houston team that's capable of doing some things, but I think the Jacksonville quarterback will be all right. Gardner Minshew, our boy. Uh, little nugget here. His grandfather originally wanted to name him Beowulf. <laughs> what? And he would. Uh, yeah. And he also like routinely did like uh, this guy's sh- awesome. Did like calisthenics and stretching just in like a uh, like uh, like <laughs> naked in the locker room, just wearing aviator shades and his mustache. I mean, just perfect Mike Leach, dude. This guy sounds like he's a better version of Nick Foles. Well, and I, I know you're kind of fucking around there, but no, I'm I not. think I'm just- I think uh, in the same way that um, Frank Reich and De Filippo kind of custom made this RPO offense, I could see some elements of the air raid and some stuff that Garden Gardner did at uh, Wazoo, them implementing this in in Jacksonville. And Bill O'Brien is just act running a team like a goddamn crack addict. He's just fiending for his next hit. Just he's just all over the place, cutting cornerbacks. I, you don't just cut like a starting level cornerback after one game like that. That's he's playing reckless. I, I think it's going to be a back. This just feels like a game, right? At the very least. So there's the side of me that's like, yeah, this, this is great. Like he Minshew looked all right. Like the offense will be fine. He's got some chemistry with shark and, and Fournette looked pretty, pretty healthy. He looked like he lost some weight. He's, he's nimble out there and maybe yeah. the defense steps it up. But on the other side, what happens if this game gets out of hand quickly again? What Could happens be. if we're just overrating what we saw in garbage time? Well, I, I don't think it was all garbage time, though. I, I think he – and Kansas City didn't have a great defense. They probably – maybe they felt like it was garbage time. But it's a division game, and it's nine points. In the same way that we saw the Redskins and the and the Eagles, the Eagles clearly a much better team. There's just going to be moments where the other team's a little bit down – and the opposing team, it, nine points for a division game is really high. It is. And that's that's kind of what I'm basing this handicap on. It, 
and I'm looking at the lines in the same way Houston plus seven, seven and a half jumped out at me week one. That's what I'm seeing. This Jags line is just too crazy. All right. It should be you. seven, seven and a half. I'll ride it, and here's why. I think the defense, if, if this defense at all is going to show up this year, they were embarrassed week one. Miles Jack is – He got thrown out of the game. He was an absolute maniac. He has to redeem himself. I think the defense shows up. We see a very low total here. So a, a, a big spread, low total, makes me want to take the dog. And, and you know, hopefully we're not wrong and, and Minshew just doesn't look like absolute garbage. Another 10 a.m. kick song, West Coast. Seattle heading to Pittsburgh where Steelers are minus four, minus 185 on the money line. Seahawks plus 155. 46 and a half is the total. Uh, man, this is tough because I don't think Seattle's very good. I'm, I'm, of all the teams, I'm maybe personally over adjusting on. One of them is Seattle, and I think I was a bit too high on them. I was optimistic about uh, Seattle going into the season, but that the way they handled that. Bengals team at home that did not look good and this is this is the perfect bounce back spot for Big Ben right and we've seen it I saw spread investor tweeted out this stat his last three games after throwing one touchdown or less and losing oh he's gonna go off yeah three touchdowns one INT 250 uh two touchdowns Sean I have a another DFS lineup that I've stacked Big Ben and Juju sorry I meant uh and let me just knock out these other Two touchdowns, one interception, 281 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, 452 yards. So those are the three games most recently after a one TD or less and a losing. And if you're if you're Seattle, this feels like a losable game, right? Like you can just almost write this game off. Well, I mean, they, they got the win, even though they were outgained by a lot, by a Bengals team that everyone thought was going to be shit and didn't have their best offensive player on the field and lost their second best with Mixon probably. So, yeah, I absolutely love it. I, I think the four points, is, I think the spread's probably on point. I think in a couple weeks, if the same game were to be played, we might be looking at a five and a half because I think we're going to see that the Seattle team is going to struggle to protect Russell Wilson. And, you know, I don't think anyone expected the Bengals to have a great run defense this year, and they struggled. That was supposed to be the strength of this team. Um so I'm going to lay the point with points. It's with a Pittsburgh. non-conference road game for Seattle, yeah. West coast to East coast. And it's the 10 AM kick, yeah. which uh, they claim doesn't matter. But I think Seattle's always struggled with that. It doesn't matter for danger Russ. <laughs> All right. Next up, Sean one. No, we got two more. God damn. So many early games. San Francisco heads to Cincinnati where Cincinnati's minus two minus minus one twenty five. On the money line, San Francisco plus 105, 45 is the total. Niners are in Youngstown for the week, so that's exciting Ooh. for them. So they didn't they didn't go back to they San did, Francisco. They did not go back to San Francisco. Okay, because I I like that I like fading that large amount of travel. To me, San Francisco highly fraudulent. I love taking a team that loses a close game on the road, plays well for the most part against a good opponent, now comes home, gets right. Mixon banged up. That hurts. But the 49ers are without Coleman. And I, Jimmy G still look like shit. Uh, I know Jameis Winston looked much worse. Jimmy G threw a pick <laughs> six. He didn't look good. And now you got to go to Cincinnati. Uh, the back-to-back -back road games, non-conference road game for San Francisco in Cincinnati. I think the, I think the Bengals take care of business. Uh, why is this not three, though? That's the only thing that... It's weirding me out. San Francisco actually started out as a road favorite. Yeah, this uh, the look ahead here was San Fran minus two and a half. So a lot of movement. Generally, we would say fade that movement, especially around here. But difference between two and a half and two the other way is pretty small. And I think Cincinnati just showed. I mean, you go to Seattle and you you outgain the Seahawks. That that's a nice. Yeah, sure, they lost. And maybe that helps our case here, even though clearly people are banging on the, the Cincinnati drum. I'm guessing this was early sharp action that that moved the number. I, I just – and to your point, I think while San Francisco's front seven looked pretty good and maybe they'll be better Seattle, better than Seattle's and, and, and the Bengals' offensive line will struggle. struggle. I, man, I don't want to back Jimmy G. I just don't think – Yeah, he's a winner. He's a – Hating two straight up, but – Oh man, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to keep fading them until, uh, 
until I see otherwise. Kramer, real quick, before we keep going with the games, I want to give a quick shout-out to playjackpot.tv. Friend of a friend just started this company, said, hey, can you give oh, a shout-out wow. on the podcast? Said, normally I don't do shout-outs, but wow. you guys are good guys. Uh, Chicago guy, friend of a friend, recommended. And it's, uh, you know, like they have something going on for Thursday night. Hey, what will be the longest reception of the game? Mm. You answer it. If you guess it right, uh, you can win some cash. So check it out. Play jackpot.tv. Fun times there. Nice job, Sean. There you go. You surprised me with that one. Minnesota. <laughs> they head to Green Bay, who's coming off that long Thursday night rest. Green Bay minus three, minus 155 on the money line. Minnesota plus 130. 44 is the total. I don't know if I can get much about Minnesota other than I thought I liked their defense. We, I think we expected yeah. defense to play well at home. And I, uh, you know, didn't see – Cousins didn't, Cousins just didn't have to do anything. And now it's a big game. While it's an early game now, – Now, did you take Green Bay's defense played well? Did yes. you watch that game and say Green Bay has a good defense? They played well. Uh, I thought they would be improved this year, and I think it, it – while I would say I'm not completely validated, yeah, I think it's what I wanted to see against Mitchell Trubisky. And Aaron Rodgers' uh, performance, bit of an outlier. Well, we, they played Chicago. Chicago's a good in, defense. In Chicago, week one, Aaron Rodgers, only 33% of his throws were deemed accurate. 32nd in the league of all QBs. If that oh, isn't prime for regression, I don't know what is. Uh, or and maybe he's falling off the cliff. I don't know. No, I, I'm I'm with you. I think that's a that's a spot where, I mean this this whole spot makes sense to me. I, I Green Bay's got long rest. Green Bay is now going to face you know what still could be a very good defense, but they're at home, and I mostly like the Green Bay defense to go against Kirk Cousins on the road. Kirk so, Cousins outside. Well, I. I just think it's, you know, we're back to that situation where Cousins, when he's playing. Well, so. and, and and the Bears, while they didn't game plan well, they do have good running backs, and that's kind of the strength of this Minnesota team, or at least. Cook is better than any running back the Bears have. That's true. That that I would say that, but look, we're on the, uh, shockingly, Sean, you wouldn't yes. believe this, 70%. On the Vikings. What the fuck? Okay, I feel a little bit better. <laughs> I it wasn't I wasn't feeling amazing about the Packers there, but the fact that seventy percent of the people are on the Vikings makes me feel much, much better. And and sometimes you just have to say Aaron Rodgers versus Kirk Cousins. Next up, <laughs> afternoon kick. Doesn't get any easier. One oh five on the West Coast. Kansas City heads to Oakland, who's on a bit of short rest. Kansas City's minus seven and a half, minus three sixty on the money line. Oakland is plus 353 is the total Sean I'm, oh, gonna, <laughs> I'm, getting, oh, I'm getting sometimes it. you just have to say Patrick Mahomes against Derek Carr sometimes you just have to say the Kool-Aid man against the uh Jay, John Gruden man you had your you had your momentum Oakland you had your we're gonna rally around this uh guy who uh, destroyed our team you're not going to do it again you're coming off six days rest but here's a here's a, here's a real nugget and now normally i like to take uh the points in division matchups i've already talked about that a couple times in this podcast sean what are you doing you're going against your trends your your stats your info your gut my gut is telling me to take the kansas city chiefs and you want to back a guy who has the bigger gut but the numbers back it up chiefs in divisional road games since December 2013, 14 and 3 ATS. Hmm. And those are big numbers because they've been good every one of those years because Andy Reid in the regular season gives you double digit wins. He just wins games. And if you're winning, you're covering. I don't think they're going to miss Hill against the Raiders. And I, I think they're going to be able to match up well. It's a real big number, right? It is. I mean, Oakland as a home dog, plus seven and a half, go for it. Yeah, I'm not ready to bet on Gruen, Sean. There's not much to this handicap other than the Chiefs. I mean, sure, maybe I'll be wrong. And unfortunately, there's only three games here, so I'm probably going to bet on it. Yes. I just don't want to bet on the Raiders. There you go. Like, is there a, a narrative where they're like Josh Jacobs, like they slow the game down. Maybe they have a defense. They actually have a pass. Rush. Well, there's certainly still questions about that Kansas city defense, uh, which I think are legitimate. 
but everything else, that offense looked just so good. Even with Tyreek Hill out, LaShawn McCoy looks like he he was running hard there for a little bit. Back to back road games. That's yeah. So but I'm also just gonna keep sprinkling thoughts. We're having a thought exercise on why we shouldn't lay seven and a half in a divisional game. If I'm going to lose back-to-back picks against one particular team and it's the Oakland Raiders, fine. So be it. I'm with you, Sean. Let's lay that seven and a half. Next up. Oh, I like this one. A little rematch. New Orleans heads to the Los Angeles to take on the Rams. Rams minus two and a half, minus 130 on the money line. New Orleans plus 110. 52 and a half is the total. Sean, Akib Tlaib said... The pass interference, no call, wasn't their problem. <laughs> Love it. He's snatching chains still, I bet. Snatching chains. There's a decent uh, Saints revenge angle. However, the Saints still not good ATS week one and week two. Very bad. Uh, again, that's why I love that Texans angle week one. Yep. Very bad ATS week one and week two on, in, under Sean Payton. And this Rams team. They they didn't really get going against Carolina. Long road trip. Now you come back. Yep. Jared Goff coming uh, coming out of a zero touchdown game. Yep. I think he bounces back. New Orleans. You want to talk about Super Bowl? It felt like that Super Bowl against the Texans Monday night, storming the field, like just going nuts emotionally. Meanwhile, the Rams just kind of eked out an ugly game in Carolina. Back home, I think emotionally it favors them great spot uh i don't think the saints travel that crazily where they'll be outweighed in the coliseum mm. should be at least 60 40 yeah well i mean i think the, the, at this point rams have gotten a nice big bandwagon so that's good yeah I, I think you lay the points here all day i think you know new orleans off monday night off a tough game emotional win rams okay they took care of business in carolina we know that's a tough spot we know that's a nice result for them and to your point we love we love Cooper Cup. We love Robert Woods. We love Jared Goff and DraftKings this week. Jesus it, Christ, Ryan. We're agreeing about too many picks. We, are we? Uh, one last thing I forgot to point out. Uh, we, we should we should mention this. When we were talking about the Jacksonville-Houston game, the look ahead there was three and a half. So, um, Nick Foles. Oh, my God. I love Nick Foles. Probably not six points better than, yeah. than Minshew. So. Um, next up. We got the Chicago Bears heading to Denver where Vic Fangio, a little revenge spot uh, for the team he left, I guess. Chicago's minus two and a half, minus 145 on the money line, plus 125 for the Broncos. 40 and a half is the total. Just play it right now, Sean. Play that lock sound effect or dog sound effect. <laughs> we love Denver early. We know Chicago. You, if you long, needed long a book against Mitch Trubisky. To beat him, Vic Fangio would have that book, right? Uh, there's so many reasons why I love non-conference road game for the Bears. Granted, they have long rest, but Denver at home, elevation but, early in September, coming off a loss. But it's it's the, the one pause I have. So look ahead with Chicago minus one. The one pause I have is they're off short rest. Chicago off long rest. Yeah, a bit of a a, a, a bit of an issue for me, which probably probably why it's not going to be a whale play. But holy shit. Mitchell Trubisky practiced with this guy every day last year, every day. And it's a gimmick offense. What do we typically see when we, we have gimmick offenses versus a former defensive coordinator? They know how to shut it down. They see it every day. He's not going to be caught by surprise and Denver's coming home. We love Denver early in the season at home. This to me feels like a, a super obvious play. Yeah. That's the only thing that's scary, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> that and we've agreed on how many picks in a row? Way too many. Jesus. We've only disagreed twice, and one of those was the Giants, where I kind of I kind of agree with you, but I'm taking the Giants. Philly heads to Atlanta for Sunday night football. Well, this this is great, Ryan, because this comes uh listener question at Mr. Oh. Bearcat twenty three fifty two. What would it take for Sean to pick against the Eagles? Hell, the fucking freeze over, Mr. Bearcat. Carson Wentz, a.k.a. third and Wentz, 12 for 13, 193 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, Air, uh, Atlanta Falcons looked highly fraudulent, even in the dome against Minnesota. Lindstrom, their first round pick for guard. Oh, He's geez. out. Uh, their offensive line just did not look good. 
Eagles lost Malik Jackson for the season, but they do have Timmy Jernigan who played really well. Uh, a little scared about the cornerback play, but I think uh, I think they're just going to be able to move the ball up and down the field at will against the Atlanta Falcons. Look for the running backs to have a big game. If you're doing a showdown fantasy football, uh, take a Which shot. Which one? At, what do you mean? Which running back? I, I would vote Miles Sanders. Mm -hmm. uh, they seem to – he had a touchdown called back on a bullshit holding call by the receiver, and uh, they seem to really want to get him involved. I think they're going to get the screen game going with him a little bit, and I think that's going to be a tough matchup. Just watching that kid live, you saw Miles Sanders, and uh, watching him, you're just like, holy shit, that kid's got burst. <laughs> I haven't. I mean, uh, oh, no. he's got burst, baby. Oh, I'm definitely pulling that. Holy shit, that kid's got burst. Mark uh, that time code. Okay. He's got burst. If you're if you're uh, wanting to hate on the Eagles, you can look at the Falcons ten and one ATS in home openers. If you're a hater like that. Oh wait, Ryan, one more nugget. The Raiders <laughs> safety uh, Jonathan Abrams, uh, rookie safety. He's on IR, so he won't be in that game against Kansas City. Even another reason why I like Travis Kelsey more for uh, DraftKings. You know, I, I you know, I don't do totals. No, I don't. It feels like an over game. Oh, right? okay. Right. Yeah. Um 28-24 Philly. That's my prediction. I just I I can't imagine like whatever was going on in that game in the spaceship, whatever powers they have up there in Minnesota. Yeah. I, I think we're going to see this Falcons team bounce bounce back. Love it. And I think this love is, being on the opposite side. I'm taking the Falcons plus two here. I, I think this is going to be a competitive game. And while I think the Eagles showed uh, they, they're going to score some points this year, I think we're going to see this Atlanta offense bounce back against the defense that shaky at start. Who'd they lose up front there? Malik Jackson. Uh, that's uh, that, that feels like an important position when you're playing this type of offense. So, Could be. you know, we're going to get, we're going to get to see uh, Mr. Cotter. Maybe get to get to get back <laughs> offensive coordinator there, but uh, so wait. You part of your handicapping is enjoying the play calling of Dirk Cotter. Attack the cornerbacks. I think he he he's he's willing to throw the ball down the field, and I think uh, we saw what we saw Case Keenum attack your cornerbacks. So I, I feel you. I think the Eagles will eventually have a good defense. I think the cornerbacks. Would you agree? Are maybe the weak part of that defense? Uh, yeah. Yes. So, but I, I don't know. I mean, Ridley, Muhammad Sanu, Julio Jones, I think these I think are professional all... receivers. They were going against a guy named McLaren and a bunch of other dudes that you probably couldn't even name right now. So I think a huge step up in terms of who they're going to be defending. Give me the Falcons. Solid too. point. I think they'll get a ton of yards and catches. So I would look to play. Wow, I got a solid point. When no, no, no. I'm saying fading the Eagles. Uh, well, I even mentioned the concern at defensive backfield. And Julio Jones has always had big numbers as far as catches and yards, not big numbers when it comes to touchdowns or wins. But if you're in a PPR fantasy league, uh, I, I would definitely look to start him or get him involved. DFS, whatever. All right, Sean, last game, Monday night football ESPN nailed it once again, where the Cleveland Browns are heading to New York. The first Monday night football game to take on the New in York honor of NFL 100 grind. Uh, to take on the New York Jets, who are three-point home dogs, plus 125 on the money line, minus 145 for the Browns. 46 is the total. Oh, boy. I, I don't know what to do here. Because Freddie Kitchen. Mm. Road favorite, Monday night. Odell Beckham back in. The, is there going to be sexual tension between Odell Beckham and the kicking net? We know he's going back. This is the same kicking net he tried to make love to. A number of times on the giant side. Is it going to be like running into an X? Like, oh, hey, wait, what? Oh, I thought you were here. I'm here for work. What do you? Uh, I uh, I'm on a different team. Things are it's different. It's definitely going to be awkward. <laughs> it's. De I mean, do the Browns show up? I don't know how you can bet the Browns here. Hmm. Interesting angle. I mean, you can say the same for the Jets. Well, right? but I, but I think the difference is is that we saw the Jets defensive line kind of control a lot of that game and Cleveland's Cleveland's off Mayfield's already hurt that mm. offensive line is trash Darnold that, is surely to play better I think I, I, while Cleveland also has a nice pass rush and, and we'll see I guess we'll see that but I think I gotta take the home dog here I just don't know if I can bet on Freddie Kitchens how many penalties did they have Sean was it 18 19 20 super sloppy 
And and I guess it, you can look at it two ways. They're probably going to clean up some of that, but how much? And how much of that? And that was at home. That's 18 or 20 penalties at home. Now you're, you know, you're going on the road. It just seems like, you know, I'm sure Beckham won't get into trouble hanging out <laughs> in his own stomping ground. It's going to get that Coke and pizza combo. Uh, get, a, get a slice and a let, Coke. Let me ask you this. Ignore the preseason hype. Yes. Just watching games last week. And, you know, the Jets were winning the game for 58 minutes. What? Why is this not minus three for the Jets? What about what you saw Cleveland do on the field suggests they should be a three-point road favorite? Browns, seven and three ATS is road favorites. Why, why, why are they favored by three? <laughs> I don't know. It, it, seven and three ATS is road favorites. I, does that go back to like 2001? <laughs> like how back, long? back to the 80s. Jets, 19 and seven ATS at home following a home loss. I, I mean, you look, I just, that's the, that's the part I don't get. I can explain most of these other numbers. I, I'm struggling with that because even Baker Mayfield well, and, and, trash. And kind of what you, to what you're saying, the opening line was Browns minus one. Now it's Browns minus three. If anything, it should have been a push, right? Like from what you saw. Well, hold on. Now you make me want to look at the look ahead. Because, okay, the, the look ahead was Cleveland minus three. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. So then maybe I don't know where I'm getting that. But still. Percentage I, of money on Cleveland, 80,000. Or sorry, 80%. 80,000%. 80,000%. That's enough for me to take the scrappy home dog, New York football jets. I mean, I, I in all a, honesty, I'm not going to fuck with this game. Or maybe unless, if I'm up big, I'm you should throw. fuck with the props that I throw out there because I haven't tabulated. I'm pretty sure I went seven and three, seven and three, five props or, a game, perhaps six and four. Yeah. That's it, Sean. That's it. That's all she wrote. Oh, I'm taking the Jets. You can you can mark that frame an eight, dude. Mark it eight. Well, what do we do now, Sean? I don't know. You hit uh, the soundboard. This sound is the first board. time doing the podcast. I know. I know. We went a little long. We didn't listen to our own schedule. Locked Dog Tees presented by MyBookie.ag. Promo code SGP. Kramer, kick things off. Well, um, I noticed you didn't bring up our records, Sean. No. Horrific. Well, my lock record is what? One and oh, baby. Say it louder. One and oh, one hundred percent. So I, I put a lot of thought into this one. But honestly, I don't know how you can look anywhere else. Give me this Pittsburgh Steelers mm. team to come home, to get right, and to beat a I think what we're gonna find out underwhelming, underwhelming Seattle team. Uh totally frames up for a big Ben home spot my dog give me the Denver Broncos plus 125 they take care of business that dog voice was way too loud and masculine for how small that dog is I, I, I'm not I'm not digging a lot of the I mean you want I know it's a weird you want me to throw a tamp out there uh and then teases this is an interesting tease week right yeah. you get lo lots of tease opportunities uh I think we I think you have to tease Indy up to nine Okay. I think you have to tease Kansas City to one and a half. And I think you have to tease. Maybe you'll disagree with this one, but I think I think teasing uh teasing this Atlanta team. Uh eh, you know what? I didn't I'm gonna throw some extra sauce here. Give Did me you the say Indy up to nine? Indy up to nine, Kansas City down to one and a half. Okay. And man. All right. Tease the Broncos to eight and a half. All right. You took a couple of mine, Ryan. For my lock. Give me the Los Angeles Chargers in Detroit. Minus three. Although, bet it at two and a half because I'm sure you can probably get that somewhere. Somehow. Just keep lurking over at mybookie.ag. For my dog. There's some small dogs. But give me a big dog. Gardner Minshew wins outright. In oh. Houston, plus 360. I love that. I do like that, Sean. It's an onions play, Ryan. Sorry, if you, you know, this podcast is for gamblers, not for pussies who like stats. No! My gut is telling me Gardner Minshew is a fucking winner. Uh, for my tease, KC down to one and a half, Denver up to eight and a half. So you're just going to copy my tease? 
No, I had that going previously. And then uh, Baltimore minus seven. All right. Keep it simple. Long pod, but it was fun. Shout out to our boy, uh, TJ Reeves. Check his podcast out. Follow us on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. Live free game Periscope back Ooh. in studio. 9 a.m. West Coast kick. We will be announcing the winner of the uh, lock challenge, which we're going to tweet out Saturday morning. And then uh, you pick one of our four locks. Uh, the fans yeah, vote on we it. We got to get that figured out this week. Well, we got it figured out last week. Oh, I know. I'm saying all four, all four options lost. Yeah, that was horrific. <laughs> and we apologize. We're going to do better. We're going to do it for you, our clients, for the fans. And again, thank you as always for all the support. Rate, review, share on iTunes. Those reviews, man, they're hilarious. They're fun. And they help us keep the lights on for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Hope to see you soon, Daniel Jones. Kramer, let it ride.